I want you all to imagine being in darkness. I want you all to imagine not being able to follow your passion. Imagine being not able to do what you like. Imagine carrying rocks at your back and not being able to climb. You try to reach the stars, but you can't see anything. You are in a state of depression. Good morning, my name is Monishwaran, and my passion is to identify and decipher problems in the hopes of finding a solution. To put that in a sentence, I like to find the best possible way to react to a problem. My, uh, although problems are everywhere, and most of us are afraid of solving problems, I love solving them. One of my first projects was to change the way visually impaired navigate the surroundings. On coming home from school one day, I came across an incident. I came across an accident of a visually impaired person. And that prompted me to look into the lives of the visually impaired. See, most of these visually impaired people use rudimentary guidance systems, like walking sticks, to navigate their surroundings. And I wanted to bring technology into their lives. I wanted to change the way they navigate their surroundings. So I sat on my computer and built something. I came up with a device that is portable, user-friendly, and also affordable by everyone. And the device consists of a camera that would scan the environment and look for any dangers, like traffic signals, zebra crossing, and notify the user about these imminent dangers. In the end, I not only changed the way visually impaired navigate their surroundings, but also changed their lives forever. And today, I'm going to talk about a project that I believe would have immense impact in the field of healthcare. I'm talking about Project Life. Right now, there's a big problem existing in the field of mental health care. I'm talking about suicides. Nearly 800,000 people commit suicides every year. To put that into perspective, and it depresses me as I say this, by the end of my talk, 15 people would have taken their lives all over the world. Suicide is also the second leading cause of death for youngsters, that is 15 to 29 year olds. So I wanted to change. I wanted to change the way people interact with each other and curb suicides. And why is suicide so hard to curb? Diseases like, say, common cold have symptoms that present themselves outside more explicitly. If a person comes to you with a runny nose, you would for sure tell him that he's suffering from common cold and you would step away from him. But that's not the case for mental health disorders. They are not easily detectable. These disorders have very subtle changes shown in the human behavior. There are very subtle changes in the behavior and the mood of the person. So it's not that easy or that obvious as a runny nose. Humans, moreover, are not really good at, at identifying these kind of emotions and these kind of problems. And it's really hard for us to understand what kind of feeling another person is feel, feeling. However, machines are not like this. Machines are pattern-finding geniuses. They're very efficient at finding patterns. So why not use a machine to detect emotional state of a person? Right now, we do have solutions to help curb the problems of suicides. But also, they come with their drawbacks. In a vast country like India, we, ha we do have hotlines and mental health workers, but they have their drawbacks as well. Suicide hotlines don't run 24-7 in our country, some of the suicide, suicide hotlines. Moreover, they have a specific duration and a specific day when a person has to call and express their feelings. Moreover, mental health workers are scarce too. But what if the person doesn't ask for help? To answer the previous question, we need to ask ourselves, why won't a person ask for help? There may be many reasons for which a person might not be interested in seeking help, but one of the biggest challenges is social stigma surrounding mental health disorders. Another problem is access to mental health care is expensive. In a country like India, where, mental, where health care is expensive and most people don't even visit a healthcare profession, let, let alone healthcare, a mental health care professional. 
In fact, in 2015, 2016 alone, 70 to 92 percent of people in India, depending upon the state, had zero access to mental health care treatments. So how do we curb these problems? Turns out the answer lies with machines. Computers are really efficient at finding patterns. And symptoms or expressions or even human behavior is a set of patterns. Humans exhibit behavioral changes outside when, there's, when there is change in their mind. If there's something going on in their head when they're disturbed or when they're in a disturbed emotional state, they exhibit outside changes. But some of us wear masks to protect ourselves. A person who is cheerful outside may not be actually happy. He might be crying inside. He might just act normal. However, we do carry smartphones, smart devices everywhere around us. And we do that regularly. And these devices record huge amounts of human behavioral data. For example, how many calories you have burned, how much steps you have taken. And we can use these devices to find and track and analyze these changes and find correlations between cause and effect. And we can do that using deep learning technology. So what is deep learning technology? Well, deep learning was built on the inspiration after getting inspired by how the human mind works. Our human mind contains billions of neurons. And these neurons, after millions of years of evolution, they have perfected in problem solving. And we are trying to do that artificially right now on the, on the computer. We carry devices that record our behavior. For example, our smartwatches or smartphones track, track sleep, uh, sleep time, or uh, how much calories you're burnt, or the, how much of workout you're doing. And we can use these behavioral data to predict what kind of emotional state a person is in. We can find these subtle changes and predict what, could, what is going to happen by the person. Some of us carry these, this, these devices and these IoT devices. And for example, let's say a person is moving around. And he might not, he might not be following his regular pattern of behavior when he is in a disturbed state of mind. And since these devices record our behavior, we can build an application around these data points to predict what kind of mental state this person is in. Let's go back to, a, to illustrate this more, let's go back to an example. Say there's this person. He's a happy person, and he sleeps regularly at 10 p.m. And he gets up at 8 a.m. So he's getting a full 10-hour sleep. But when he is in a disturbed emotional state or when he is depressed, he might not sleep for 10 hours. He may, he may sleep for four hours or not sleep at all because of these, these words or these uh, thoughts that, that go on in their minds. Most of our phones have applications that track our sleep time. One of these data sets we could take and analyze them. And if there's any inconsistency in this pattern, we could predict that this person is suffering from depression. We can find correlation between the sleep time and the mental state. In addition, adding behavioral data like workout routine or even web searches, we could predict with a really good accuracy whether this person is going to commit suicide or not. And with this information, we could provide help and also alert loved ones based on what kind of emotional state this person is in. Machines and humans are not two different identities. We have co-evolved and we are co-dependent. Technology is not the problem, rather technology is the solution. In fact, I believe this kind of application that tracks our information and portrays what kind of emotional state we are in and also helps curb this problem of suicide, never any problems of suicide is one step in curbing these kind of mental health disorders. Thank you.